So back when I was 12 years old, there was a night that I was sick and my father had mixed up some NyQuil with some alcohol and told me to drink it. I did. I immediately started throwing up because of the alcohol and everything. Um, I ended up going to sleep. I woke up in the middle of the night with my father taking my pants off and um, performing oral sex on me. I was being molested and anything you can possibly imagine was running through my head about, you know, this is wrong, I need to say something. I was just scared. He was molesting me a couple times a week until I actually lost my virginity. And then after that, it started being penetration and then oral sex being performed on him. There was many, many nights that I did cry myself to sleep. I shut myself down away from friends, family. I was considered to be a problem child, but I was not a problem child. I was actually hurting. When I was 19, I made a phone call to the sheriff's office and I had them come out and I did not want them to say anything to my father about what was going on. I didn't want them to allow him to walk up while I was telling them what was going on and they allowed him to walk up. They told him everything that was going on. I shut down, I told them everything was a lie and went to jail for that. Honestly, I didn't want my father, my father had a lot of health issues. I did not want my father to end up dying in prison with his health issues. I just wanted it to stop. My father was the only one that had custody of me. He's the only one that raised me my whole entire life. And I knew that if something else happened to my father and my father ended up in prison, I knew for sure I was gonna go into the system. After I called the cops, nobody believed me. Everybody thought, you know, everybody was on his side. Everybody thought that I was lying, but I want to make sure that my story gets heard and I prove that I am telling the truth 100%. I regret recanting my statement because this has been something that I have had to deal with for many, many, many years. It has just eaten me alive and it haunted me every single day, like even now I can see his face and just very vivid things that happened to me when I was a child. And it, it kills me. I honestly wish he was around and I can just ask him why. Just, I just want to know why. Why me? Your first living child, your baby girl, why me? If I could go back in time, I would just tell myself, say something. Just say something. Stop yourself from this hurt. Honestly, just get the man off the streets if that's what it takes to stop. I also want to bring awareness to everybody that if something's happening to you, you're not alone. Say something. Don't be afraid. There's people to help you. And I just wish that I would have done that. <laughs> Brittany, you suffered, you know, horrific abuse at the hands of your father. How old were you when this started? As far back as I can remember, I was 12 years old. When you were 12? Yes. So when I was sick and he gave me a drink to drink and it was mixed with alcohol with NyQuil. And he said, drink this. And I said, I don't want to drink this. I know what this is. He said, drink it. So, of course, I drank it. And I started throwing up everywhere. And finally, I got myself into bed. And when I got myself into bed, I was finally dozing off. And I wake up to him taking my pants off. And I'm trying to push him away. And he's just latching onto me to where I have, I have physical tearing still to this day from it, from just him not letting go, not releasing any type of, I could not get away from him. There was nobody home, I couldn't scream, I couldn't do anything. I was just held there. My father was my hero. He was, he was I, everything I looked up to, everything. And I told myself, before the abuse started, I told myself, I wanna grow up and be just like my, my father was a police officer. I wanna grow up and be like my father. 
you know, I, I want to be able to do the things that he does. And he was a great man all around. Steve, I'm telling you, if he was in front of you, you would never know that this is him. After the abuse started, did you still feel that same way about him? I'm a daddy's girl, 100%. After all the abuse, he was everything I had. I'm a daddy's girl. Like, I, he's all I had. I didn't have really any family. When you think about him now, what's your feelings about I him? Cringe. cringe. I cringe. I couldn't, just even looking at the screen, I couldn't even look when they showed his pictures. I cringe. So the abuse started at 12, and did it last all the way up until he passed away, or? All the way until I was 19. Until you were 19. Yes. When I called the cops, it never happened again after that, after I called the cops. So that he got nervous or scared? That's what I'm thinking, yes. Okay. What was it that you finally drove you to call the police? Because this is, you know, from 12 to 19, seven years. And then at what age were, did he start penetration with you? 14. 14. So 14 and 19, you know, raping you. What, ma what was it that made you finally call the police? I was done. I, I couldn't take it anymore. I was, I had been through boot camp. I had been through multiple times of being Baker acted. I just, I knew it wasn't me. I needed to reach out to somebody and get help. Yeah. How, were you married when you told Tyler about the abuse? Yes. So you waited till waited. after you were married. Um, do you think he believed you when he told him? Um, a part of me feels like he believes me because he verbally says he believes me, but his actions of, you know, just the way he shut down when I told him, it's like, mentally, do you really believe me, you know? And the conversations I've had with him. That had to be him, tough telling your husband that you were raped and him shutting down, huh? Yes, he, he didn't know what to say. Right. He ever meet your father? He did. What did he think of your father? Uh, he thought that, you know, he would never, he's not that type of person. When you spoke about your father to Tyler, what were you, what did you say? I made him out to be a person that he wasn't, really. I made him out to be better because I was hiding it. I made him out to be better than what he was. How long were you with your husband before you told him? Five years. Five years. I didn't really know what to say because, uh, you know, one, one part, I'm like, where the hell is this coming from? Like, it, this guy's been your hero. Now you're telling me this. Where's this coming from? So you were really confused. Yeah, and then, like, I'm also fighting with myself in my head because I don't want to hurt her feelings more. So I don't want to be like, yo, he's a piece. Like, screw him, blah, blah, start just bad-mouthing him. So it's kind of like the don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything. So I'm just kind of sitting there listening. Um, later on, after the conversation, I did send her a text from like downstairs. Um, it's like, babe, um, I do believe you um, and whatever you need to do, however we need to handle this for you to move on, I'm all for, I love you. Sorry that I didn't say anything, I just don't know what to say. A lot of people look at you like she's a liar. But you came here today, you took a lie to tuck the test, and we asked you, when you were a minor, did your father ever have sexual intercourse with you? You answered yes. When you were a minor, did your father ever perform oral sex on you? You answered yes. Regarding the narrative you gave to police regarding your father, did you fabricate any of the information provided? You answered no. The results came back the same to each one of those three questions, and it came back that Brittany told the truth. And this show has always been about putting the spotlight on things, uh, uncovering the bad things that are going on with people's lives. And uh, I take great satisfaction in people telling me, hey, because of your show, uh, I was able to speak out against this or come out. And using this, you by doing this, Somebody's going to watch this and say, you know what? She was brave enough to do that. I can do that, too. I so, hope so. I hope so. Uh, good luck to you. Please, please let us know that you became an EMS. We really yeah. rooting for you on that. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you.
<laughs> My name is Steve Wilkos and I'm an investigative talk show host with a law enforcement background. It was my life or his. My job is to get truth and justice for everyday people. Watch our videos now.